Hello again, everyone. I'm Dr. George Simon, welcoming you to another edition of the new Character Matters program. This is the podcast where we talk about what I consider to be the defining issue of our time, the character crisis that we've been in for some time now, and that affects every aspect of our lives. And toward that end, I've been talking in recent episodes about material compiled in a new book titled Essentials for the Journey, Embracing and Living the Ten Commandments of Character, Proven Principles for Emotional, Psychological, and Spiritual Well-Being, Principles that Have Stood the Test of Time, and that can help make us all the kind of person we have it within us to be. Underneath it all, we are inherently savages, but we are also capable of some really great things. It all depends on our mindfulness. It all depends on how well we get to know ourselves and each other how deeply we ponder this great mystery we call life. And toward that end, I've also written some articles recently, one of which is uh, posted just today, along with this podcast. So I'm going to be talking about uh, the article that I've just posted in today's program and expanding upon its themes. You know, for some time um, in psychology, there's been a real uh, debate about the kind of approach we really need to adopt in order to help people change and grow. And what we've come to realize is that uh, it's different strokes for different folks. It's basically a question of what's the best fit within our models of intervention and helping people change. What's the best therapeutic modality given someone's circumstances, given their backgrounds, given their personal characteristics? It's always a goodness of fit. And when it comes to character disturbance, the mode of interaction, the the approach that we need to really help people grow and change is radically different from anything we've known before. And that's why I've spent a, a professional lifetime writing about such things and doing instructional seminars and workshops for professionals and for the lay audience as well. I know character dysfunction to be a very unique problem requiring a very unique approach to deal with effectively. But as I've mentioned many times and first brought to light in my book, Character Disturbance, character disturbance is inherently a spectrum phenomenon. We've come to realize that about so many human conditions. It exists along different spectra, spectra of type and degree. There are different levels of character dysfunction. And of course, there are different varieties of character dysfunction. And the approach has to be tailored to match. One of the more dominant approaches when it comes to character dysfunction comes out of behavior theory. And um, in my article today at 
on my blog at drgeorgesimon.com. That's D-R-G-E-O-R-G-E-S-I-M-O-N.com or manipulative-people.com. Either URL will get you to the same place. But in my article today, I talk about the origins of behavior theory and its major tenets uh, that gave us what we call the cognitive behavioral paradigm. We've known for some time that the way we think about things, the attitudes we form, the manner in which we process information, the way we think greatly influences both the way we feel actually and the way we act more especially. Knowing that there's this connection, for example, for example, if someone holds the belief that of a, a person of a particular sex or a particular race or a particular orientation is an inherently inferior creature, then they're likely to uh, behave in a discounting, disparaging, perhaps even abusive manner toward that person. How we see things influences how we act. What we think about things influences how we act. Accordingly, most of the time, in therapeutic encounters, whether it be just a conversation with a friend, a spouse, other relationship partner, or even with a therapist, most of the time people waste incredible amounts of time and energy trying to get people to change their minds. Why? because we know that if their mindset is different, they might behave differently. And here's the problem. Thinking your way into a new way of acting is very inefficient. It's a lot more powerful. And it's actually easier to act your way into a new way of thinking than it is to think your way into a new way of acting. Folks who've had to sit in a boring classroom, reciting things over and over again, being told things over and over again, know this well. It's much easier and more effective to see and do and experience. It illuminates doing things differently changes you. And that's why I was inspired to write Essentials for the Journey, now out on Amazon. And I'm pleased to say the same thing is happening with it that happened with all my books, and I'm so pleased. People are telling each other. People are recommending it. This is how it works. I knew it deep in my heart when I started working on this. In the book, I expand upon principles I first outlined in my book, Character Disturbance, years ago. I call them the Ten Commandments of Character. They're commandments because they urge certain types of action. And those actions have the power to change. Now, it gets a little bit more complicated than that, of course, with human beings. Because real change really meaningful, lasting change 
that permeates every aspect of someone's behavior and view of the world, you know, life, etc. Really meaningful change occurs in the heart. Some hearts are by very nature either mistrusting, hardened, insensitive, and it's hard to get messages through. So what really makes the difference is not just doing the things advocated in the book. What really makes the difference is taking the principles to heart and taking the lessons to heart, processing in the heart what those lessons are meant to do to help you grow. And because character disturbance is a spectrum phenomenon, there are very mild disturbances and even the best of folks have mild character issues. Because it is a spectrum phenomenon, everyone I think can benefit from the principles outlined in this book. In my new book, I share several stories all of which have been altered in some way to ensure complete anonymity. And in many ways, the stories um, are not as singular as they appear because there are so many similar stories. It was hard to pick one that would illustrate the various points that the uh, stories are meant to convey. Uh, there's a particular story that I'm thinking about that isn't just based on some profound truth, even though some identifying circumstances have been uh, altered on purpose. But it's a story that's repeated itself in my professional life hundreds of times. There have been hundreds of times, truly hundreds of times, when the events that I describe in this story have occurred, where folks who initially were struggling with significant character issues and who had been told the same things over and over and over and over but they didn't reach their heart. And then somehow with the right amount of encouragement and the right amount of reinforcement, they slowly began to do some things differently in their lives and experience the benefits. And then begin to rethink things. and to ponder the principles that they were learning and to take them to heart. And that's what began to make the difference. All meaningful change takes place in the heart. And that's why it's taken me so long and it has been a long time to put this last book of mine out, Essentials for the Journey, Embracing and Living the Ten Commandments of Character. It's taken so long because I knew that in writing it, I would have to reach some hearts. This is the only way things are going to change one heart at a time, beginning with our own. This is the only way things are going to change. We have tried everything else. We keep trying the same things that don't work and expecting different results. This is the definition of insanity. 
We've tried power and control. We've tried legislating. We've tried segregating. In the United States, we have a higher percentage of our population incarcerated or in some way removed from society than any other country on earth. And even though there, are some, there is some legitimate criticism, um, some legitimate concern that some of the folks who are there are really struggling with mental illness, even though there's some truth to that. The, the more stark fact is that there are so many dysfunctional individuals, individuals who could very well be behind bars because of their chronic misbehavior, who aren't. So the fact that we already have a higher percentage of our population uh, segregated than any other free country in the world and could have even more if we had the space for them, is a, is a tragic testament to how out of control we've let our character issues be. This can't go on. Times are trying right now. It is amazing how the universe is trying to work with us. we will either succeed in coming together and learning how to care for one another, starting with ourselves, or we are going to suffer a great deal more and necessarily so. The universe is trying to help us make room in our hearts for real meaningful change. It wants us to change our mind, to change our attitude, but it's doing it the way it always has to happen. Not with talk, not with urging, but with action. That's how it has to happen. We must do differently to begin to think differently. And then we must find it within our hearts to embrace the lessons, to see the bigger picture, to understand how the universe is really trying to work with us. We're meant to be here, but we need to cooperate to get a glimpse of the plan and to cooperate with that plan. And toward that end, I came up with something that I truly believe was inspired in some way. I sure hope it proves to be that way. Something that I hope will reach the hearts of many. And I pray that uh, you will assist me in this and recommend uh, Essentials for the Journey to your friends. I've been asked by many folks whether there will be an audio edition. Yes, there will be. Uh, audio editions take some time uh, to process and, and the manuscript was not completed. It's been a five and a half year project. It wasn't completed until just a few weeks ago. And if it weren't for the availability of CreateSpace, it would have been even longer reaching print. Uh, so there will be an audio version available and um, I pray that that is relatively soon, but it's likely to be a couple of months yet. And I'll have an announcement and I'll have an announcement about that when the time comes. So once again, uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to be talking more about these matters on future editions of Character Matters. 
And I would urge you to avail yourself of all the timely articles on my blog at drgeorgesimon.com. That's D-R-G-E-O-R-G-E-S-I-M-O-N.com, including my current article on what we've been talking about today. And once again, I wish you all well. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.